equal to the number of attacking creatures. So definitely interesting. Yeah, yeah definitely interesting with his with his uh, token making capabilities. He can gain a lot of life a turn with with Path of Bravery. And what's interesting is if he plays against an aggro deck, all that life gain really adds up. Yeah. But if he's playing against somebody where the life gain doesn't matter very much, well, then he gets an extra anthem. Exactly. So it, it kind of is. Yeah, it works in both situations. Which is yeah, and neat. it powers itself up, so you don't even have to like play any other weird cards to support it. Yeah, actually, last round I was watching him, he, he managed to defeat in two games a blue-white-red control deck. So, kind of going up again against Esphinx's Revelation deck this round. Yeah, interesting. These types of decks traditionally a little bit weak against control, but it's possible that the combination of so many Anthems and Soren uh, is just getting the job done, as well as, you know, the occasional precinct captain that's left unanswered. Does, yeah. uh, what I wonder is, does Mads actually have Ratchet Bomb? Well, he doesn't have any, it doesn't look like he has any Ratchet Bomb in the main. He has two in the sideboard that he can board into. Um, so that'll definitely be an, op an option for him. But yeah, game one, he uh, only has three Supreme Verdict in the way of sweepers. Yeah, but now, yeah, after sideboard though, that Ratchet Bomb, not only is it such an incredible sweeper against tokens, it gives him a way to potentially get rid of stacked uh, Anthems. Right. Um, this is definitely one matchup, though, where the, it, it might end up being costly that he has that Mads has O-Ring instead of Detention Sphere. Yeah, so Detention Sphere kind of turns into that extra wrath, you could say, against a token stack. Really won't be able to do that in this matchup. He'll, he'll have to just use it on things like Anthems. Yep, and only one, one yeah. at a time. So Mad, uh, Mads, uh, not quite Urzatron, but he, <laughs> Mad Utzon going to six, just like his opponent Mike Cannon. Right. Talk about a sharp dressed player. Yeah, so <laughs> good on Mike Cannon. I am I'm impressed. A very Michael Jackson circa nineteen ninety, you know? I like that. So one I kinda wanna look at Matt Hudson's it's a blue white it's probably I think a control deck. First I thought it was, was a flash deck. But um, he's not actually playing any like he's no, he's not playing any pikes, he's not playing any thought scours. He has one more land haunt. Okay, sorry, he does have, here, he has three Thought, thought Scars, but still only one Moorland Haunt to go with it. So it's like, I mean, a lot of times when I think of a blue, a straight blue-white Flash deck, I know uh, when we saw them, I think around last year, we were seeing a lot more of that engine going on. So I think the real distinction is, do you have cards like Aetherling and Planeswalkers? If you do, okay. then that's a control deck. If you don't, that's what people are calling Flash. Um, a lot of people don't even play the Pike anymore, but he actually has access to one Pike in his sideboard which isn't a ton, but it, it is a different dimension if he wants to kind of go that way. Okay. I think it really just comes down to, are you trying to kill with Aetherling and Planeswalkers versus are you just nickel and diming people with your uh, Restoration Angels and Cantrip Creatures? All right, he's definitely chosen to do the second one here. Yep. Uh, uh, although, I, I, some of these flash decks will play like a big creature or two, like a Thundermaw Hellkite or a Geysas Draft or something. He's very pure. He definitely is on the control side of it with just more counter spells and no extra victory conditions. Yeah, the only other creatures he has, he has some Tidebinder Mages in the sideboard, but those not really a Wincon style creature. Tide, Tidebinder Mage is pretty sweet. Yeah. So we see Mike Cannon starting out with a Champion of the Parish and an Azorius Guildgate followed back by Mads Hudson. So Champion's probably like the only non-token card, I think, in the token stack. What his main creature base is, is uh, Doom Traveler, Lingering Souls, Midnight Haunting, Gather the Townsfolk. Yeah, I mean, every other, like, every card he has either makes tokens or pumps tokens, with the exception of Champion of the Parish and Ors of Charm. Ors of Charm being a key removal spell, but also, sometimes you just get back another guy, you know? Yeah. Like, if you get back a Doom Traveler, it's like another token supply. All right, so we see Doom Traveler follow up by Mike, for Mike Cannon. Uh, swings two with Champion of the Parish. Uh, Mads just plays a second land and passes the turn. Now, a uh, swing for three, and the question is going to quickly become, does Utzon have a syncopate for the Lingering Souls? Right, so he, it's an interesting thing. So Matt, look, if he does have the syncopate, you know, say he has a syncopate and an Azorius Charm, he's left with a little bit of a decision here. You know, obviously Azorius Charming and Champion of the Parish is really good, but I, I think what you're pointing on, touching on, syncopating is also pretty important here. Well, yeah, what, could, what else could Mike Cannon have that he wouldn't have played pre-combat? If right. he had any Anthem, if he had a Gather of the Townsfolk, if he had a Doom Traveler, if he had a Champion of the Parish, he would play all those pre-combat. Right. I mean, the big worry would be if his play was Midnight Haunting or something, then you'd actually just ship the turn. As you see, the ling it was Lingering Souls, yep. but Mads just played a Think twice. So Utzon definitely uh, looking for Supreme Verdict if he doesn't already have it. His game plan very much revolving around uh, sweeping the board on turn four. 
Yeah, his turn three is just enough Howled Fountain into play tap. So outside of the Think Twice, he actually hasn't cast another spell yet. And spacing now a fair amount of power for Mike. He has five power on the board. Now six as he adds a second champion to the parish. Well, once you're like the, eh, hopefully you don't have a Supreme Verdict. You yeah. Well just shove all in. It's not like the <laughs> one one for one is going to do anything for you afterwards. Right. So this the attack, we're going to see if, the, if Mads has, has an Azorius Charm this turn for it. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and take six. That'll drop him down to nine. Another thing twice, continuing to look for a Supreme Verdict. Yeah, so it, I think even if he had the charm there, it seems like it really is just a Supreme Verdict or bust situation. Yeah, and here we have it. All right, so Supreme Verdict will sweep the board, leaving Mike with just one spirit token from that doomed traveler. He actually doesn't yet have the black mana to flash back his lingering souls. And a pass back. Mike of note didn't make his fourth land drop here. Swings for one. Listen, it is down to eight life, so. So those those ones can add up a little bit a little bit here. And we're um, gonna see a midnight haunting almost surely, right? I, I would think so. Either he has a completely uncastable hand or a midnight haunting, and I would I would bet on the latter there. All right, so he goes for it. Question is, will it resolve? It does not. Makes you wonder. Is there any chance he should have just played the midnight haunting while Utsun was tapped out? Just because it, just because it cards an instant doesn't mean you have to play it in your opponent's turn. Yeah, I think so. The danger of doing that would be that Mads could have another supreme verdict, right? Right. But if if he does, you'd rather just draw it out now. Right. It's, it's not like the supreme verdict isn't going to be just solid gold eventually. Yeah, and we did see a rewind as the counter spell, and now Restoration Angel will come down to eat that doomed traveler spirit, and Udsun successfully clears all clears all the creatures off the board. There's Soren. Yeah, he's playing Soren. So he decides then to play Soren, Lord of Innistrad, into a Restoration Angel. Well, now the Angel can't kill it in one hit. Right. So and he is making a token, so at least he's making some progress. You know, like he's going to end up getting at least two tokens out of it, and forcing the Angel to not be available as a blocker. Right. So I think it's a good play. Yep. And he does have the because he just drew that isolated chapel. He does have Lingering Souls flashback available to him now also. Yep. So he will be able to protect the uh, Restoration or protect the Soren from the Angel if he wants. But he does have a few different lines of play available to him. All right, so Soren goes down to one on the attack. Uh, for turn, Cannon draws a Godless Shrine and hits Hudson down to seven. Assuming that we don't see a second Restoration Angel here. Yeah, that that would be pretty rough. And no, he does looks, decide to take it. Yeah, it looks like it'll stick. So the blue-white deck, because when you compare it to the blue-white-red deck, has a little bit of a harder time with planeswalkers because it can't actually burn them. It usually has to, you know, restoration detention angel sphere has or... to, yeah has to sphere them or angel them. Um, here he actually doesn't even play detention sphere in the main deck. Wow. Yeah, he's got one renounce the guild for like Damre Rade or Soren, which can't even deal with every planeswalker. Right. And then in the board he's got Ratchet Bomb and uh, Oblivion Ring, but only two of each. And we see from Mike Cannon he actually d doesn't make. Lingering Souls. He just plays Doomed Traveler, makes a token, and passes back. And actually, Udson did have the Restoration Angel. He just chose not to block with it there. Interesting. So now, one the, angel killing the Sora, and the other angel staying home. What do you think about not playing Lingering Souls there? About not playing the Lingering Souls? I don't know. I mean, it's he's. It seems like he's trying to not commit to the board, but at the same time, I don't. Re I don't really like that idea. I feel like he pretty much. You know, I feel like he's going to lose to the second sweeper anyway. You look at Udson's graveyard, Udson already has two Think Twices in the graveyard. It's really unlikely that Udson wouldn't be able to close out, a, you know, he wouldn't be able to close out a game if the game goes long enough. Yeah, plus, I mean, it's not even clear yet if you want to sweep if you're Udson. You got the, yeah. at the time he had the biggest creature, now he has the two biggest creatures. We're going to see a Dissipate for the Precinct Captain. Um, my, Udson, by playing that Restoration Angel end step last turn, pretty much telegraphed that he had a counter spell in hand. And now see him swing for the first time at toward Mike for his life, toward Mike's life total. He drops Mike to 18, opting to swing one Restoration Angel and leave the second one back on defense. Yep, things going pretty well for Hudson. These uh, these control decks traditionally very well suited to fighting a token assault. If you just stick a single Supreme Verdict, you're in such good shape. Yeah. And Cannon with no plays, Utsun will draw two cards on end, on Cannon's end step with the two Think Twice as he'd played early in the game. 
continuing the one to attack with, one to stay home with approach. All right. Restoration H.O. gets in there, puts him down to 15, so it's now on a five turn clock. Cannon with no flyer is not actually able to block if he decides to. So yeah, so you're saying usually with these Restoration Angels, they, the control decks are really well equipped to deal with the token strategy. Um, Lingering Souls goes a fair amount of the way in, to fight that. Uh, it definitely helps. I mean, obviously, cards like Dissipate and Syncopate can, can really hold it back, and it still doesn't hold a candle to the influence that Supreme Verdict has. But yeah. So Path of Bravery coming down, uh, or attempting to come down, but it looks like Snapcaster Mage is instead coming down hard on it. Yeah, so he chooses to rewind the spell, which is giving, you know, a certain level of respect that that Path of Bravery might be pretty hard to win with. Win through. I don't know. How, how much of a threat do you think this is to Udson at this point in the game? How much would the Path of Bravery be? Yeah, you know, so, so he obviously decided it was enough to counter it. Well, um, it definitely gets in the way of if his plan is to just race by swinging with angels. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's in pretty good shape, but I could see either way, you know. All right. Well, Hudson goes more aggressive this turn by swinging two Restoration Angels. Well, without a, yeah, without a Restoration Angel at home anymore, you know, it's time to go out and play. Get right. while the getting's good. So they're going to swing in. Hudson opts not to trade a Snapcaster Mage either the, with either of the tokens. Thought to put him down to four, I believe, and put Cannon to 11. So now we see the third Angel, which is making the... Uh, you know, he already had Angel for Snapcaster Mage for Dissipate, so he had another Counterspell anyway, and now right. he's threatening Lethal in one turn, so he's which is to, now. Which is now. This looks that second Angel. It's a swing for 11, and Cannon does have the Lingering Souls. The Midnight Haunting. Midnight Haunting. So he's going to try to make a block here. What's interesting is that this is actually game-winning if Hudson has nothing. Yeah, it's possible. If Hudson doesn't have a Counterspell here, it's possible that he's been a little too aggressive. Yeah, because you only need to block one, you're still alive, and you have exactly Lethal on the table. So we'll see what happens here. But Utsun, it looks like, does have an unsummon. So if nothing else, at least he isn't facing lethal. But this is uh, Cannon making a game of it. Yeah. For... So, you know, and this would leave him vulnerable to something like a top decked intangible virtue. Yeah, or Soren. Right. And the Midnight Haunting is going to resolve. So Utsun without a counter spell. Two spirit tokens are now available for blocking. Now, in order to threaten winning on board, he needs to block with one and not block with the other. Right. So he's going to go ahead and do that. Looks like he is taking eight off the rest. Two Restoration Angels and Snapcaster. That'll put Cannon down to three. But now he has two Vampires, a Spirit Token, and a Doom Traveler. So he has the four points to swing back with. He really needs an Anthem of some sort to be able to beat the Sun Summon, though. Yep. And what did he... Now, has he flashed back that Lingering Souls yet? Yeah, I don't remember him ever flashing it back, but... So it's possible if he didn't, you know, he could flash it back to make a pair of blockers. Okay. Swings his revelation to gain some life. Yeah, he swings his revelation in for five. He's also leaving up unsummoned mana. Um, that should be pretty safe then for Udson. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is weird. I, I don't remember him flashing back the Lingering Souls, but... I think it still might be in his graveyard. So we see Utsun going up to nine. Almost certainly going to go for an unsummon here. And gather the townsfolk. That's actually a fateful hour to gather the townsfolk. Yeah, but he packs it in. Right. Yeah, he's unable to deal with the flyers. So Utsun up one game to zero. And what's Utsun getting out of his blue white uh, his blue white deck out of the sideboard? We already talked about ratchet bombs. What yeah. else? Well, he has another. He has the fourth supreme verdict in the sideboard, and it's kind of you know as we saw at the. The game very quickly turned into a Supreme Verdict or Bust situation. So I'd have to imagine that Hudson's going to bring in the last Supreme Verdict. Um, outside of that, he has extra counter spells. You know, he has Dispel, Negate. I like Negate. Negate's pretty good. A lot of, you know, a lot of Mike's creatures actually are instant are instants and sorcery, so Negate seems just fine here. Absolutely. And he'll be on the he'll be on the draw, so it won't be able to reliably hit uh, his two drops. However, there are still, I mean there's anthems, there's uh, midnight haunting, there's Soren. Right, um, and you just want cheap interactive cards, you know. Like he's got some, he's got some kind of mediocre ones to take out. Like uh, you don't really want renounce the guilds, and I think rewind is probably just a bad negate. Yeah, renounce only hits Soren, so it, 
that's a little uh, yeah I agree that it's, it's a little yeah, I mean you might want it anyway narrow. just to hit Soren but I think it's better to just try to keep the, the Soren off the table in the first place and uh, and tr if it sticks interact with it like he did with angels or mm -hmm. you know ratchet bomb or or oblivion ring yeah so it looks like he'll board in some of those um, actually does he even bring in the o-ring o -ring? I don't know because spending three mana to deal with a two mana anthem that after he's already got to use it doesn't sound super appealing to me not that much I think if he wants to make sure he has a spell answer to the Soren, you know, rather than playing something like Renounce the Guilds, he can play something like O-Ring in that spot, which might not be too bad. Um, so I, it depends how much he likes the cards he has in his main deck. I like the Moreland Haunt on the sideboard. I do too. The extra too. tokens could go a real long way towards giving him enough blockers to stay to stay in it. Right. And then uh, finally, um, Oh no, I was just thinking that Unsummon is probably not where he wants to be. That's another easy cut if he yeah, wants to. Yeah, Unsummon kills one creature, and that can, you know, it'll trade with half of a token making card. That's really, that does that, yeah, I think he can do a lot better with his removal spells. And so viewers may recognize, outside of the uh, being exceptionally sharply dressed, Mike Cannon also writes from the lab on Daily MTG, the okay. Watsy page. Yeah. So that's the article where they talk about interesting brews, right? Decks, yes. Interesting deck designs. Yeah, he, Mike Cannon, definitely uh, definitely a deck builder. Not one to just show up with uh, any old stock deck. Four Path he, of Bravery. What's interesting is his sideboard against control. He has three Rootborn defenses. Um, it, it, it does seem like everybody has some kind of a anti-Supreme Verdict. Like all these aggro decks have some kind right. of anti-Supreme Verdict plan. He's going the Rootborn Defenses route, which can not only counter, but give him an extra 1-1 one, one, uh, as a result of <laughs> Populate. Yeah, I do like the deck. The rest of his sideboard, really not for the matchup. He has uh, just a five just five different cards, each of them kind of with a specific matchup in mind. Yep. But yeah, he does have the three Rootborns, and I think we'll see the three Rootborns. And, well, part of it is that he can't afford to cut very much out of the core deck. Almost all his cards right. are either token-making or ways to pump it. You can't really cut too much from the engine or it starts to fall apart because it's a very multiplicative type of thing. Right, you know, he, he needs, you know, you have to play Lingering Souls, you have to play Midnight Haunting, and then you want to play the eight anthems to go with them. And if cutting any of them really just weakens the deck as a whole. Uh, probably seems that out something like Orzov Charm, perhaps, in the matchup. Yeah. It does mean he can't deal with Angel, Restoration Angel. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I do think you do want, like, as particularly when he saw three Orzo, or three Restoration Angels last turn, I think you want to keep some amount of Orzov Charm just to have access to uh, mm -hmm. two answers to it. And worse comes to worse, Sometimes you're just going to Orzo Charm a Champion of the Parish or a Doom Traveler back into play. Okay. Um, but uh, for the most part, it's going to be, uh, I think he's just going to be looking to maybe trim a little bit of Orzo Charm and maybe cut some low impact cards like maybe Doomed Traveler. Yeah. You know, maybe, Do I don't know. It's nice to be able to Doom Traveler you know, against Supreme Verdict, but. I don't know, maybe Champion of the Parish in this matchup. I'm not. It's really good on turn one, but on all the other turns, the car turns That's true. the he cards a little underwhelming. Humans. Yeah, he doesn't have a ton of humans. Um, it's possible that he wants to trim uh, some kind. Well, so I don't, no, I don't think you want to trim the anthems. I think the anthems are just yeah. too good against Wrath. Yeah, I was gonna say it might be like a path of bravery, but you're right. I, I can't. I don't really think he cuts an anthem. Maybe a gather. Okay. So I don't know. The Maybe worst token maker. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess I, I, I defer to Mike Cannon's experience with this archetype. Um, Surely one of his low impact, uh, low impact threats uh, and possibly some number of Wars of Charm. But he doesn't really bring in a lot, as, as we said, just bringing in three Rootborn defenses. Right. All right, so that said, uh, you said before that the Black-White Token strategy you thought was a kind of was weaker against Supreme Verdict style decks? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep, but not just Supreme Verdict decks. The control decks in general seem to do very, very well against token strategies. Um, whenever you have sweepers, whenever you have, uh, you know, a lot of ways to to interact with them meaningfully without just attacking, um, I think you can uh, pick these decks apart, and then they end up really just a deck full of like one ones and right. a deck full of like crusades, like neither yeah, of which is and that is that is their game own. plan. Yep. Yeah, as we saw there, that post wrath restoration angel was really hard for Cannon to be able to deal with, just because you're right, his deck in, in the end was a bunch of one ones. So Odson really, you know, he, he was able to sweep the board and he played a three four, and the three four really just controlled the board for a while. Even something like Augur of Bolas seems like it's pretty decent post wrath. Yeah, it's 
it's not, uh, it doesn't block all that many different things, but at least there's the gather, the, uh, you know, and like, the, the real reason why it's going to be important though is that it gives him a real answer to Precinct Captain. Because yeah. if he's just relying on spells, there's a decent chance that he just gets torn apart by a turn two Precinct Captain on the play. However, Augur Volas, a respectable blocker, can uh, sh shut it down completely. All right, so we're going to see Cannon on the play here, game two. Uh, I, we had him on the play game one as well, but at that time both players were on six card hands. We saw a really aggressive start from Cannon, but then the turn four supreme verdict, he never was really able to recover from it. Um, do you think how, now knowing the matchup he holds back more, or do you think playing into supreme verdict is just kind of what he has to do? Yeah, I mean, first of all, i got to imagine this isn't his first time playing against a blue-white flash type deck, but I think that you got to... You know, it depends on the texture of your hand. Often you got to just play into it. Um, there are going to be times where you're like, well, I can actually realistically not commit more. He's going to sweep, and then I can actually commit like a real threat yeah. afterwards. But sometimes you're just like, yeah, if he sweeps on turn four, there's nothing I can do. So, I mean, what he kind of wants to do, I know he didn't have the option last game, would be to commit to the board in the form of anthems, right? That's the, the idea. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, ideally, uh, ideally he can, you know, like if he goes turn one champion, turn two gather, uh, and then turn three, um, uh, Path, of, Path bravery. of Bravery. He's in real good shape. But unfortunately, he goes to six cards. Um, looks like he does have a playable hand, though, so we're going to see. He does have the champion, so step yeah. one. So he has that aggressive aggressive draw again. We do see in Udson's hand a Syncopate and a Ratchet Bomb, so he has a lot of early game action to deal with this start. Decides to take two, which surely means he's got Thought Scour coming at himself. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of aggressive. Thoughts, paying two life for a Thought Scour. It does kind of indicate that his hand might be a little light on mana. Maybe he only has two lands. Right, so he just needs to cycle this land right now. Yeah, because he's thought planning scour. on turn two to hold up uh, either Ratchet Bomb or Syncopate or something. So he scours a Rewind and a Island into the graveyard. And on his draw, he does also hit a Supreme Verdict. He's got a lot of tools as long as his mana base comes together. Yeah, so there is a Glacial Fortress. That was actually his draw off the Thought Scour, so he was able to Attention hit the land there. Players. And just rather than playing Ratchet Bomb, it looks like he's just going to hold up Sync a bit here. Yeah, like, if I can hit the Ratchet Bomb now, he's most likely going to hold the Ratchet Bomb for zero anyway. Why not just save it and threaten to Sync a pay or Think Twice or Azorius Charm or anything like that? All right, so we see a second hit from Cannon, then a third land, and he's going to go ahead and go for Lingering Souls. Mm. Probably the, just a prime Sync a pay target. Yeah, this would have been a good time to wait and use the Midnight Haunting he has on the end step. But it's tough because sometimes you do that and you give him time to dissipate. The Lingering right. Souls instead of uh, Syncopate it. Instead speaking, of having to have Syncopate. Yeah, speaking of Dissipate, Hudson has one of those as well. So we're going to see him make a third land drop here. And, and here we're seeing the weakness of the champion of the parish, as you pointed out. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just kind of a 1 1. So rather than holding up Dissipate, it's okay, he's going to put the Hollow Fountain into play tapped and make the Ratchet Bomb that turn. I do not believe that Hudson has the fourth land yet. Mm. But that said, he doesn't really need a Supreme Verdict right now, so this is probably just fine. So committing a Doom Traveler. And a swing for two. That'll put Utzon down to 14. Yep, finally starting to build a little bit of a of an offensive base here. Cannon really does need uh, some some crusades of some sort. Utzon preemptively upping his Ratchet Bomb to one. Now he can threaten to actually hit both the Doom Traveler and the Champion of the Parish. Yeah. Or, depending on what kind of direction the game takes, he could theoretically just end up putting the bomb up to two to hit Anthems. Right. So now the bomb's at one. It's not going to answer this end step midnight haunting that Cannon's going for. Question is, will it resolve? Uh, my guess is yes. I think that Hudson's going to try to set this game up in such a way so that he sweeps next turn while still having a ratchet bomb in play. Right. But it's possible he wants to just keep it off. Nope. It looks like he's going to take some damage this turn. He still Quite has... a bit, particularly if an anthem hits here. Right. And Cannon's going to go for it in the form of intangible virtue. Half think that's going to hit this dissipate. Yep, this is definitely a prime dissipate target. There's something about intangible virtue. I can't quite put my finger on it, but... Well, I think, he, so he has the option here. He can dissipate it. Um, he can, or he can tick Ratchet Bomb up to two to take care of the virtue that way, and then just Supreme Verdict the whole board. Absolutely. And it looks like we do, we do see the dissipate <laughs> out, of, out of Mads. Uh... And we do see the Ratchet Bomb, yeah, which is going to leave Cannon with three spirits, um, which might not be enough to draw the Supreme Verdict out of Hudson. He might be content to just kind of keep playing it by ear. Take three a couple times. 
Um, and particularly, if he has Restoration Angel, he might be going the other way. Yeah. But it looks like he... Does he have another Ratchet Bomb? Because that would be an ideal follow-up here. Yeah, it, I believe so. Cannon really needs to stick a uh, Soren is what he needs. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he has a Ratchet Bomb, an Essence Scatter, and a Supreme Verdict. He does make the Ratchet Bomb there, so now he has But he's a... not playing around Rootborn defenses. Nope, not at all. And swing with three tokens, threatens to put Utzon down to nine. Is that going to be enough for him to blow to go for the Ratchet Bomb? Oh my gosh, it this is. is a... Okay, nope, no, no Rootborn Nope, yeah. nope. Gets away with it. Cannon looks like he's running low on... Yeah, that's the last card in his hand. He's going to go for a main phase Midnight Haunting. This is interesting. A main phase Midnight Haunting when Utzon has Dissipate Mana open. Yeah, that's not really... It, it's playing around re Rewind, which yeah. he knows the Utzon plays. one so far. Yeah, there's one in the graveyard. But he gets Supreme Verdict. Right. I mean, Rewind is the counter spell that I'd say you, maybe two maximum you'd see someone play. So when you see one in the yard, I'm not sure how much I want to play he, around he another. He play around Syncopate also. Okay. And it plays around Syncopate very nicely now that uh, he just happens to top deck Lingering mm -hmm. Souls. Yeah, and Cannon immediately goes for both half of the halves of the Lingering Souls. Yeah, that, mi that Midnight Haunting main phase is looking genius now since it pulled out that Supreme Verdict. Yep, and Hudson. A, a little bit of a punishment there for yeah. going for both of the Lingering Souls. He's going to lose... Yeah, but you gotta you got to put yeah. a faster clock than a six-turn clock. Because if he Sphinx, Sphinx's Revelations... Just once, then that's... Yeah, you're going to be in bad shape. Right. But we appear to have reach the point at which Cannon no longer is mounting any additional offense. It's going to go for another Lingering Souls. Pretty decent draw here. It looks like he does. Hudson does still have Unsummon in his deck. Um, right. I, Unsummon, I guess, does have the utility of being able to balance an Augur Boss or a Snapcaster Mage, giving him options, you know? Mm-hmm. Hudson's going to go for an Azorius Charm. I think he's really just trying to dig his way to a Restoration Angel yep. or one more Sweeper or a Revelation. Yeah, I think mainly Sphinx's Revelation or Restoration Angel. Something so that he can actually get ahead instead of just catching up. And he doesn't know it, but Cannon at this point, his last card is a Rootborn Defenses. Oh, wow. So okay. the Sweeper is definitely so, not so where the, he wants the Supreme Verdict is not it. Sphinx's Revelation or a Restoration Angel. So now that he has that in hand, the Rootborn, he's going to go ahead and go for the other half of the Lingering Souls. He can play a little more, you know, more fearlessly. Um, yeah. So, interesting decision for Cannon. If your opponent's at 10, do you go for this Rootborn Defenses to try to put him on a two-turn clock? Or is it the, probably more important to make sure your creatures don't get Yeah, started? I don't know. I think I think it's a little greedy to just go for it now, particularly when he's shown you both Ratchet Bomb and Supreme Verdict. Yeah. Hudson digging pretty hard. He thought scars himself into a Think Twice, casts, flashes back the Think Twice, casts an Augur of Bolas. Yeah, he's he's got to find himself another uh, another Sweeper pretty quick. Um, or an angel, or a ratchet bomb. Yeah, basically just some kind of answer to slow down the aggression because he's on a three-turn clock. Yeah, and a really Moral and haunt would help a lot. Really strong draw there for Cannon. He drew Soren, Lord of Innistrad. Mm. After Hudson did all that digging main phase. So does he have a seventh land? He does not. So he's going to have to choose. If he does this, he's risking all of his tokens to a sweeper. Right. What's interesting is that if he had done the end step rootborn defenses like you had suggested, this would be lethal. He could swing for ten. <laughs> I mean, now it, granted, it, it ends up not working because Utzon has an unsummon. Right. But um, it's just interesting the kind of different directions the game can go. Yeah. So Cannon's going to go ahead and make him go for the emblem right away with Soren. That'll put Utzon down to two. Unless he unsummons here, I think. Yeah, he unsummons he's unsummon the Augur. At this point, he's, he's very committed to looking for a, a verdict. Right. And he draws a second Augur. No, sorry. He's going to go for the first Augur. Finds Island, Azorius Charm, I think a Restoration Angel, so takes Azorius Charm. Cannon leaving himself without mana to Rootborn defenses, so if Utzon can find a verdict here, last chance. Finds mm. an Azorius Charm. So now he can draw and he can Azorius Charm into a, into a Ratchet Bomb at the very least. So he still yeah. has plays. He actually only has the two Ratchet Bombs, though, so that oh, out wow. is gone for him. What can he do? He's at two life. Well, we'll Snap find out. Yeah, it doesn't have enough mana anymore for Snapcaster Mage. He gets into Dissipate with that Azorius Charm, but Pass cannot find an answer. So, Cannon, I'd say sneaks that one out a little bit. Yep, absolutely. Gave himself some chances to win. And uh, 
manages to get there. We're gonna go into game three. Yeah, Hudson was never able to find that Sphinx's revelation he needed to close out the game. And it turns out that despite having swept the board multiple times, he just wasn't able to do it the third time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or I, I guess the fourth, like, he, fourth? He re yeah, Retro bombed um, twice and Supreme verdicted. Okay, so it was the fourth, yeah, couldn't find the but fourth sweeper. It's tough, without Sphinx's Revelation, like, you can't expect to just have an infinite supply of gas. Right, I mean, Cannon plays more creatures than Hudson plays sweepers, so eventually Cannon's gonna have to close the game. Whether that's through Restoration Angels or a really large Revelation. You Absolutely. Know, gonna ha and he just wasn't able to find any of those here. Yep, and we talked about the importance of the anthems for, for Cannon. Uh, he did draw some some permission with his earlier attempts at an anth at anthems, but Soren, Lord of Innistrad, sticking, being the best anthem there is, you know. Yeah, it's the anthem. It's an unwrathable anthem. Absolutely, it's very it's very difficult, short of a Karn, to uh, to do anything about that particular anthem. So 21 minutes left in uh, 22 minutes left in in round nine, our final round before we uh, begin our top eight. We're going to play one round of the top eight tonight, mm -hmm. uh, four of those matches, and then tomorrow morning be back for the uh, the top four leading into another standard open. Yeah. So yeah, we have a double, doing a double standard open this weekend. Um, what's always interesting, and we got to do a double standard open, uh, in, got to, I got to cover one in Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, it's interesting that a lot of the players kind of evolve their metagame over the course of one day. You know, we've seen eight green decks in the top eight of this open. You know, there's a lot of players who will see that and then will maybe adopt to try to beat those decks in the second open. So you kind of get, you, you get to see like this evolving metagame happen in a really short amount of time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of people trying to uh, stay one step ahead. I wonder how much of a how much of a difference are they really going to detect? Like, yeah. the, the field today, how different is this field from the field that people were expecting? Well, so I imagine that like the field today and the field tomorrow would be somewhat similar just because not everybody can change decks, right? A lot of people, they, they showed up with their deck, that's what they'll play. But, um, so say you had access to a lot of cards, you know, how would you adapt your deck to this metagame? You, you've seen what's happened today, you know. I, I guess I would move away from caring so much about be, beating control and try to make sure that um, I'm beating both, you know, red green aggro and jund, but I'm also beating the decks that I think that people might realistically switch to. Right. Um, the thing is, I mean, I, yeah. How do you beat both red green aggro and jund at the same time? That green white deck looks kind of sweet. It was definitely that deck would definitely be good against green red aggro, um, and as we saw, had about you know had some decent play against jund too. So that might be an inter That's an interesting choice. Yeah. Yeah. You know and. Plus, at the end of the day, I, I think you could still tune a control deck a little bit. It just, it's not always where you want to be trying to build a control deck in a world full of uh, Jund and Red Green Aggro, but you could do it, you know. And it's probably the right way to do it, to just play blue-white if you're going to go that route. You know, similar to the way Hudson's playing here, similar to what Luis Scott Vargas is playing uh, in the SCG Invitational Qualifier in Denver this weekend. So uh, game three is uh, is Utzon going to six again? He mulligan, not well, Utzon, sorry, Cannon. Cannon. Cannon he, he hasn't kept a seven yet, and I don't think I he's, think he's on six again. Now, yeah, you know. I like it. I'd like it more if he didn't do it. Right. But. He's. Yeah, I imagine he would like it <laughs> a little more too. Yeah, I mean, I, you can't argue with the results from last game, though. No, the fact that he has cards like Lingering Souls do help him recover from the mulligan. I also somewhat feel like it's a question on Utsun's deck. Like, Cannon's deck seems to do about the same thing every game. You know, it has, it's gonna play some creatures and some anthems and some lands. And it, you know, it, a lot of it depends on, these games have felt, depend on, depended on Utsun's hand more so. You know, it was like, did he have the turn four sweeper? And then really, did he have a way to close out the game, game two? And plus, how does he use him? Right. When does he pull, like for instance, that game, he used a sweeper to kill two one ones. Right. Maybe that was a little early. When does he blow the ratchet bomb? When does he tick it up? When does he even play it? When do you hold a permission? When do you blow your cantrips? When do you cantrip main phase to try to hit a land drop? There's a lot of play on Utsun's side that's really going to determine a cannon just needs to present as reliable uh, of an aggressive force as he can and just try to make life as difficult as possible for Utsun. You know, put him under the gun. All right, so cannon's going to be on five cards for the third game. Absolutely. Not, not a great sign, but uh, this deck is capable of some pretty sick draws. I mean... If he, like, 
you know, first of all, obviously, there's always the possibility of a double champion of the parish draw, mm -hmm. um, with, you know, one other supply of humans, like a gather or, or a doom traveler or something. But there's also the possibility of just, you know, if, as long as you hit at least three land, a few lingering souls, you know, if you play an anthem on turn two and a couple lingering souls, you could end up with quite a board despite being short on cards. Yeah, Cannon could play an entire game on three lands, I feel, and not be particularly sad about it. All right, what do you think the chances are that Cannon keeps his five? I think he's keeping almost any five. If there, I mean, at five, if there's lands and spells, you have to think he's keeping it, regardless of what they are. What they are. I mean, is there a higher percentage of five-card hands that he keeps compared to six-card hands? Um. Because once you're down to five, you're down to, right. there's a good chance. Like, I mean, he's on the play. There, are, like, he's not going to keep Vault of the Archangel four spells, right? Or Swamp in four spells. So it's like. He ships more a higher percentage of hands because there's a higher percentage of one landers in a five card hand. That said, I think the other kinds, you know, strategic mulligans, are, I think those certainly decrease. You know, if, if I told you that, that there would be a hand with three lands, two spells, there's very few combinations that he would ship. Right, but is he really going to ship four land, two spells? Um, possibly. I mean, he's probably not shipping four land two spells. I either. guess it depends on what the spells are, of course. But it, whatever spells he would ship the six card hand with, he would surely do it at the five. You know? Yeah. All, All right. So, so starting off, uh, Utsin on the play actually um, after losing game two. Utsin quickly developing his mana. Cannon, not a fast aggressive start. No one or two cost plays. However, he does have. Uh, it looks like he's going to be able to play a threat this turn. And follow it up with, uh, oh no, he's, <laughs> he's going to go the Path anthem. of Bravery on an empty board. Yeah, a nice slow conservative Path of Bravery. Is he drawing out a counterspell? Is that the plan here? Is that he's like, okay, well, whatever I play, can be countered anyway? I'm not positive he has a creature right now. He does have an intangible virtue that he drew this turn as well. Um, I think that might just be his play. And you see another land for Cannon. He's now going to try for an intangible virtue. Um, Hudson has just made four lands, and Fred's kind of playing at what point he needs to start countering these anthems. Right, because at this, like, it's starting to get to the point where every single Midnight Haunting is, it's like, just, it's a, a must counter. A powerful threat. Yeah, I mean, right now, ev yeah, a Midnight Haunting is six power for Cannon. Granted, he hasn't made a creature yet, he also has Vault. <laughs> He's gonna go for another intangible it. virtue. Alright, so that's, they're all resolving now. So Utsin, I think, he's going to be on the plan to counter every creature spell, as opposed to countering the anthems. Are we going to see another... He has... It looks like his two cards are Rootborn Defenses, and what else? I think it's Orzog Charm is the and last Orzog one. Orzog Charm. So yeah, he, he, he's... <laughs> certainly an interesting drop room. I like how Utsin has just played six lands this entire game. No Think Twice, no Azorius Charm, uh, no Thought Scour, just lands. Cannon's deck becoming a combo deck. He's got yeah. that Rootborn Defenses in hand. Right. So you see the first spell of the game for Hudson is a Sphinx's Revelation on three. Definitely a, definitely a very solid play. Particularly against an opponent starting with five cards and <laughs> with no offense yet. So we see he has kept in Renounce the Guilds. We see him draw that for the turn. Well, I think he was a little traumatized by that Soren situation last game. Yeah, it might be that he brought some back in. He does have one main, one board. He has access to up to two. And... Ratchet Bomb. Looks like I'm see Ratchet Bomb. Is, so would you say, do you, is, do you save it for tokens, or do you move it to two to take care of the virtues? Uh, I'm guessing if no tokens enter the battlefield by next turn, um, you, you go ahead and tick it up to get the, the intangible virtues. We, we're getting word that Mike Cannon has called for yeah. two Lingering Souls in a row off the top. Well, that certainly would be, you know, pretty good for the game plan he set up here, first resolving the three anthems. Yes. See if he can pull it off. Uh, a discard for Hudson. He's going to go ahead and discard that Renounce the Guild. So there's not a Soren yet. All right. And there we go. Okay, Swingering first number one. <laughs> number one and the called shot. Yeah, and my guess is we certainly have somebody on the floor ready to swoop in in the event that he actually draws Just another Lingering Souls. <laughs> well, I mean, he clearly should have just uh, called, he's should have called for this earlier. Um, this is really, you know, so now, okay, that's eight power on the board. Yeah, and he... he Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, he, now he uh, oof, mills his own revelation. He decides that uh, he can't really afford to, uh, can, he can't afford to flash back the Lingering Souls right now because he needs to make sure that that Ratchet Bomb is pushed two different ways, you know? Right. 
Well, the, the three anthems give him the ability to do that, you know, to really just play two creatures and only use them. And um, we do see Hudson on end step is casts a Thought Scour, Snapcaster Mage, Thought Scour. He does draw into another Sphinx's Revelation. And he did keep the Ratchet Bomb on zero. Yeah, so uh, he's suggesting he is willing to hit tokens with it instead of try to deal with the uh, the Crusades. But um, this actually, on this board, it seems to me like it's going to be difficult for Hudson to actually mount an attack. You know, so his way that he wins is Restoration Angel, but how does he deal with, you know, how does he swing through 4-4 four, four Flyers? Well, he's trying to ratchet bomb him away, but now that he has to deal with a, a Rootborn root defenses. defenses, he's got to find a way to counter it. Yeah. Okay, he has Syncopate. Um, so now he's going to get in for two, and then he's going to have to deal with each of the, the next two 4-4 four, four flyers as its own entity. Yeah. It's possible we're going to see from him, like, a, an Azorius Charm on one of them, and maybe, you know, an Unsummon on another, or who knows what all he's going to do. But what Cannon really needs is to keep the steady f th flow of threats coming because mm -hmm. each one is very, very, very effective. It just seems like Hudson's going to have to use so much resources to deal with every spell that Cannon plays that even even when he... It's going to be hard for him to reach that point where he's truly established control of the board. Yeah. Now, that said, fortunately, Eric Lauer loves us and wants us to be happy so we can do things like Sphinx's Revelation so that we can afford to actually keep up with uh, this kind of, you know... Nonsense. All right, so we see that Azorius Charm to draw a card. A cannon did make two more 4-4s by flashing back the Lingering Souls. I don't believe he drew his second running, running Lingering Souls like he'd called for. But we do... Oh, another Ratchet Bomb. All right, and, and another, another Rootborn Defenses. Is he going to have the counter spell for it? Yeah, it, almost surely. I think so. He's got to find some way to do it. Oh, he has a Snapcaster, so at the very least he can Snapcaster back a... Uh, that Syncopate. A Syncopate. And I think he's going to go he for that rewind? play. He doesn't have Rewind, right? If he's in a Snapcaster, Syncopate, yeah, Syncopate for two. That takes care of the Rootborn. The Ratchet Bomb takes care of the tokens. And Hudson gets in for two damage. This is one of those spots where it's time for Soren to make an appearance. Yeah. Soren would be just... So, well, plus one, make a 4-4. Four, four. That's, uh, that's like Garuk life level. Link. That's like Garuk level of efficiency, but even better. Yeah, with 4-4 with four, four Life Link. And he's got the... Uh, uh, the Vault of the Archangel, so any other tokens could potentially be lifelink too. He just he needs to mount uh, an offensive now with, before Utsun has time to, to rev up a so, whole new grip. So what that Vault really does is as soon as Cannon, if Cannon can stick any creature, he can undo all of this damage. Oh, there's the Lingering Souls he was hoping right, for. second this Lingering is, Souls. I mean, now, granted, Utsun will be able to Sphinx this turn even if this, rev, uh, this Lingering Souls resolves, but... And he had, you have to think that Hudson really hopes he has a counterspell for this. You know, he can Revelation for more answers, but if that Lingering Souls resolves, it's going to take probably up to three cards to deal with all these 1-1s. One he's got a Supreme Verdict in his hand, but he really doesn't want it to go that way because he's got this nice little clock thing he's trying to... Right, and him keeping a clock is actually somewhat difficult in this matchup. So, especially when all the creatures are 4-4s. Four yeah. Now that said, I think uh, his consolation prize of six new cards and six new life... Uh, I think he'd take that end of the of the, the deal. If, you, if you're going to Fact of Fiction split it, I think he'll take that half. Okay, I should correct myself. The creatures are three threes at this point. Actually, Path of Bravery has been turned off because yes. Cannon's dropped down to 12. Yep. But it, Path of Bravery isn't a source of life gain. You know, it is a source of life gain that can cause uh, Cannon to be even further out of reach of these Snapcaster Mages. All right, so a new grip for Hudson brings him up to 29. Uh, this is, you know, typically the situation where once you revelation for six, you know, the game's over, but Cannon's surprisingly still in this. <laughs> and so there's the Supreme Verdict. Yep, takes care of the first half of the Lingering Souls. And Hudson will recommit a creature in the form of Augur of Bolas. Quite the commitment. Yeah, I say. yep, <laughs> that 12-turn clock. But by whiffing there, he gets himself down to seven cards. And we are going to see a flashback Lingering Souls, which combined with Vault of the Archangel, is going to let him gain eight life a turn. It only takes one swing to get his life total back up to his starting life, and anything above that, you're, yeah. uh, you know, you're talking brave type of uh, territory. So he's going to go for that second half of Lingering Chills. He has six mana up. That's outside of Syncopate range. Um, actually, so the counter spells that Hudson has... He plays three Essence Scatter, two Syncopate, two Dissipate, he one Rewind. He probably boarded out the Essence Scatters. Probably. Well, we saw, we saw last game at least one Essence Scatter still in the deck. 
So there's Open at least, I don't know if he re sideboard it, but he may have those. He also has the, possi the possibility to have two negates. If you need assistance with the end of round procedures, please raise your hand and call for a judge. Can we see another Supreme Verdict? And from the looks of it, uh, his six point Sphinx's Revelation produced him about two of everything. So <laughs> Hudson looks like he's in pretty two good shape. All he really needs is a Restoration Angel to really put this one away because from the looks of it, he's got lots of different types of answers. Part of the reason why he keeps missing with these augers is he's already got all the spells in his hand. Yeah, uh, but what he's, re like you said, what he's really looking for is that, is that Restoration Angel. Cannon draws Orzhov Charm for the turn. We may, I don't think we may Ladies see it get back a 1-1 one one here. going to finish in the here. top 64. We will be handing out prizes. Yeah, I know. Once we it's have not, the a, final standings. not a great play to have to make. Finished, filled yeah. out. Tax information with Particularly us. when you uh, have a picture of Restoration Angel is happening Aaron. soon. Yeah. So a thoughts, main face thoughts tower for Hudson mills a thing twice, you. which he flashes back, but both of them draw lands, so he's going to pass the turn with six up. He did hit with the auger, but dropping cannon down to 11. And what did he show with the auger? Uh, the auger missed again. Ah, okay. So. Right now we know nothing of Hudson's hand other than that it has a few lands in it. Right, so no, I think that's in, um, from the looks of it, has uh, a rewind at the very least. Yep, so n hit cannon down, it's in think twice first, we before have combat. Inside. Now swings cannon down to 10, so he has a 10 turn clock. He appears to have a supreme verdict and the rewind you'd mentioned. Uh, a full grip of seven cards, so he opts not even to play the, main, the think twice yet. There we have Doomed Travelers. Can Looming tell. Doom. Yep, and that will and we do see the Essence Scatter. All right, so by playing the spell, Utzon now able to flash back his thing twice. He's avoiding discarding, and there he hits a Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage combined with Rewind. He's in pretty good shape. All right, so on the attack, Can's going to try to Orzhov Charm back that Doomed Traveler, I think, to chump block and then make a 3-3 three, three, three. flyer. Yep, but it is Rewound. Yeah, but I think we're pretty much on the counter every spell part of part of the game for Hudson. Snapcaster. Yep, looks like he's in a snap. Interesting. See, I, I wouldn't have hated just snapcastering Sphinx's Rev again. Yeah, so he, get the he maximum did snapcaster, it was on a second Doors of Charm there? Yep. Okay. So now, looks like Mike Cannon out of cards, I believe. Yes. And Hudson still has Unsummoned for his uh, Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, so he can say nothing of... Yep, and now he has a sync of eight. I mean, yeah. So he still can make that Sphinx's Revelation play. It just costs him one more mana to well, do and so. And realistically, at this point, he's got two hard counters and four points of damage on the board. He doesn't need to, he doesn't need that many more time walks. He's even got his right. Orish Charm and Unsummon. At this point, I think you don't even need the Revelation. You just want as many counter spells as possible. All right. So the swing of four puts Mike down to five. So uh, lingering souls not quite gonna yeah. Yeah, Lingering Souls won't even get there because he does have enough mana to use his Sink of Fate. But, Doom Traveler. All right, we're gonna see, we, Mike plays the land pre-combat. I think we may as a result... Oh, another Angel. Another Angel. Yeah, okay. this is it. And All that's right. going to be lethal. Matt, Mads Utzon advances to 7-2, and two, defeating Mike Cannon. Yeah, Cannon. <laughs> Smiles there. He think he sees the writing on the wall. And he's going to go ahead and activate Vault of the Archangel before before no, damage. Send him a message. All right. He's got Mads Hudson. Wins two games to one in a drawn-out affair game three. Um, I think a pretty decent fight there for a five-card hand. I was, you know, when he had Absolutely. The, yeah, when he had the three anthems in play, you know, I was actually kind of worried for the control player. You know, yeah. Does. Now, I mean, Cannon definitely a, a fighter. It was a real tough match. I mean, it's a bad matchup to begin with, and he mulligan, mulligan, double mulligan. Right. Still put up a real good match. Um, just a real respectable uh, showing from uh, from Mike Cannon.